Hey, this is Terratoots. So, you've opened up a copy of Terrigen and have no idea what to do next? Then let's do this. We're going to create this cool mountain scene in just nine minutes. With Terrigen open, the first thing you'll see is the 3D preview, which is currently showing the default scene and a lot of surrounding panels, buttons, and settings. We'll simplify things for now by closing the node network panel by clicking this little X here. You're going to want to learn to use the node network as you go along as it's critical to becoming a proficient Terrigen user, but we won't need it for this simple scene. The key to navigating the 3D preview and your Terrigen world is the Alt key. Hold Alt and left click to look around. Alt and right click to pan. And Alt and middle click to move forwards and backwards. As soon as you stop moving, Terrigen will regenerate the view. To reset the view, Click this camera button, second to the left down here, and choose Current Render Camera. The top row of tabs here are essentially different views or workspaces that contain tools for working on different aspects of your scene. The Terrain tab lets you build your terrain and geometry. Shaders you can think of as color for now. Water lets you put down lakes. Atmosphere has cloud settings. Lighting lets you control the sun, and Objects lets you add trees and plants and such. You'll notice that each tab has its own presets for what's visible in the 3D preview, but you can override these with the little buttons at the top of the 3D preview. For example, if you want to see the atmosphere in the terrain view, click this little cloud button here. First, let's mix this up a little bit so we're not working with just the default scene. Come to the Terrain tab, and select Fractal Terrain 1. This is the node or layer that's creating the default mountain shapes we see here. Let's go ahead and get a new mountain range by clicking the random seed button. Cool, now I'll hold Alt and move over here to the right, where it looks like we have an interesting new mountain and a place for a lake. Terrigen uses fractals to generate infinite procedural worlds so oftentimes starting a scene is just a matter of finding the right viewpoint. Once you have your camera at the view where you eventually want to render your image, make sure to save the location by clicking the small camera in the bottom left. Now, if we move around in the preview and reset the view, we'll come back to that location. And when we render, this is the view we'll get. Next, our mountain needs some color. So let's come over to the shaders tab. Notice that doing so automatically activates the shader preview here at the top, so we'll see those colors when we add them. Let's close the node network again as well. Terrigen adds colors in layers, one atop the other, kind of like Photoshop layers. We'll start out by adding a new surface layer by clicking Add Layer, Surface Layer. The surface layer is one of Terrigen's most versatile tools, with a lot of different capabilities and effects. Today we'll focus on using this surface layer to add color to the terrain and control where it gets placed. To work on colors, it can be useful to use Terrigen's Ray Traced Preview Mode. To activate it, first let the terrain finish rendering, then click the RTP button above the preview. Changes to the terrain geometry won't update when the Ray Traced Preview is on, but it will give us a quick look at our shading. First, we'll choose our color by clicking this color picker box and I'm going to do a dark green here to give an impression of vegetation. We'll name this layer green to keep track of it. Now obviously this looks a little silly with green everywhere, so let's break that color up by adding a slope constraint in the slope constraint tab. Go ahead and click limit maximum slope. What this is going to do is make it so that the green color will only apply to terrain with a slope less than 60 degrees, so our steeper cliffs will stay gray. This is already giving us a much more interesting look. Next, let's add a little snow to the top of our mountains. We'll add another surface layer with Add Layer, Surface Layer, and we're going to make this one whiter by setting the color to 0.8. Notice that by default, without a color selected here, this is just going to give us different shades of black and white and gray. 
Now, we want to restrict the snow to the top of the mountain. We can do this in the Altitude Constraints tab by checking the Limit Minimum Altitude box. To find a good altitude, we can mouse over the mountain, right-click, and choose Copy Altitude. Now, paste this into the Minimum Altitude field. Now the snow will only apply above that line, with a fade-in given by the fuzzy zone value here. Our scene is starting to look decent, but it needs some more dramatic lighting, so let's move the sun. Come to the Lighting tab and select Sunlight. The Heading slider will bring the sun around. Let's set that to 81 degrees. You can also see the sun position relative to the current view by looking at this little yellow dot up here. Elevation will move the sun up and down in the sky. Let's bring it down towards sunset at 10 degrees. And now we're getting some better lighting on our mountain. Now we'll tackle the sky. Come to the Atmosphere tab, and we're going to add a few cloud layers. First, add cloud layer, high level cirrocumulus. This will add a thin layer of cloud puffs. We'll mix this up by also adding a high level cirrus layer for some thin wisps and patches. Finally, we'll add a little drama with a low level cumulus cloud. If you don't like your cloud formation, the easiest place to start is by clicking the random seed button a few times. Here's one that looks pretty good. We'll wrap this scene up by adding the lake at the base of the mountain. Come to the Water tab, Add Water Object, Lake. We'll need to exit the Ray Trace Preview for this to show up. Lakes in Terrigen are basically just a big flat circle with a water shader on them, so the main thing we need is to set the water level. Let's pick somewhere right in here. I'm going to choose 205 meters which will put the water right up against the base of our mountain here. I want a little bit smoother water as well, so let's come to the Surface Shaders tab, click this green plus mark here, and then go to Water Shader 1. This will open up the actual water shader. Now we can drop the roughness to 0 0.005, which will give a smoother lake surface with shorter waves. Cool, our scene is looking pretty good. So let's make a render. To do that, we'll come to the Renders tab. And to start out, we'll do a quick test render at the default settings. This will give us a small peek at our final result. So just push Render Image. The test looks good. So I'm going to bump the resolution up to full HD at 1920 by 1080 and increase the quality of the terrain by increasing the micropoly detail to 0.85. You can of course tune these settings to whatever your computer can handle and how long you're willing to wait. And here we have our final render of our mountain lake. At this point, you can save out the rendered image to a TIFF file or keep working and adding more detail. This is really just the tip of the iceberg of what Terrigen can do. There's so many cool tools and techniques to explore and entire worlds to create. The learning curve is undeniably tough, so I highly recommend you check out the rest of the Terrigen Basics series on my channel to quickly get a grip on the essentials. Happy world building! <laughs>